The dog and I are here in the ruins of the Claremont Primary School. It shut down in 2011 and then in 2017 there was a mysterious fire and that took out a lot of the building It was still in place. Now what we're left with is some bricks, some cinder blocks, some burnt stuff, a bunch of rust and nature coming back. What we don't have are the children. The kids are all gone. It's possible that what's happened here is a taste of things to come. Because it's so expensive for younger people to buy homes now and to form families, they have less kids. And if they have kids, they have them later. So overall, the numbers are down. And with that means that there's gonna be less need for primary schools like this, potentially. Built up in the 1920s, the school taught the children of workers at the chocolate factory. The rundown site at Cabri Road has been the subject of different housing development proposals for several years, but it's remained empty. Changing hands a few times, it still looks like this, a picked scab in the green. In 2020, the Newtown Catholic Tennis Club sold their two clay courts. This saw the end of one of the island's oldest sporting clubs, having lasted almost a century. Working with Communities Tasmania, the plan has been to build social housing on the site. Held in limbo, work has not begun. The ruins of the TVT6 Taz TV wind television stations were abandoned in 2014. In 2023, the much-needed Tasman Private Hospital was set to be built on the site. After the original buildings were demolished, the developers announced out of the blue that they no longer wanted to go on. There would be no hospital. The vacant land is now for sale. The dog and I are here on the eastern shore of the Derwent. Just out there on the water, there's a couple of yachts going by and behind the yachts is the zinc works. That factory is not the reason why we're here. We're here because on the other side of the river, there was a different factory. Over a century ago, this facility was doing commerce. It was in operation and things were going all right for a while and then they weren't. If you're a person inclined to believe in things like curses, well, you might be of the same mindset of the bloke that lived and worked here. He had some terrible luck only to have even more. And today, after all that time, there are some physical ghosts, things that you can touch. What happened here? Nothing too much fun. In 1915, the fertiliser plant at Shag Bay in the next inlet down the river had exploded in deadly fashion. George Russell's father and brother were killed in this event. Three years later, he set up a new fertiliser plant. Things were going quite well for a while, living basically on site in Porter Bay. But then one night, he awoke in the depths of darkness, cracking noises pulling him from his bed. The plant had been claimed by flames of unknown origin. Running to save his humble operation, he was forced away by the heat. By the time the sun had risen, he'd lost everything. The sun's really coming down right now and you can see the damage that the sun has done to the paintwork on this church here. This is St Margaret's ex Anglican. It was built in 1867 and it's one of the few early wooden churches that were built in the colonial era. Now the windows, well they're all gone and the front door here, that's been boarded up. There used to be steps here 
they're all gone. It's an interesting building and it has some historical significance in that it was used by a bunch of the people that were the early frontier people over at the failed Risden settlement, just a, a few yards in that direction. But it's been allowed now to fall apart. I'd say to the point where it can't be saved. And in reality, we all know it's not going to be. But if you decide to come here and have a look for yourself, you'll see why the place would have been chosen because of the aspect. It's just the right height up on the hill to get a nice clear view of the Derwent. There's Mount Direction over there. There's Mount Wellington over that way. It's sheltered, it's peaceful. And if things had gone just that bit differently over at Risen Cove, perhaps this whole church wouldn't be here either. It'd be rebuilt as a much larger sandstone structure. Who knows though, it's all sort of, you know, imaginations in time. The people placed at the Risden Cove settlement were not old. The vast majority of them didn't want to be there either. John Bowen himself in charge at a juvenile 23 years of age. History is, for the most part, the biographies of young people. The church stopped functioning in 1954. The cemetery, however, is still active. In the grounds rest the remains of people who saw the very beginnings of the city and to the remains of Tasmanians who were perhaps only a few months ago walking around in Hobart, remembering their own brief personal histories and wondering about the future.